Welcome to the WLA Weekly here on VSBN.ca. I'm your host, Tally Campbell. On today's edition, we look back at the opening week of the Western Lacrosse League. We got your standings, and I talked to Casey Cook, the commissioner of the Western Lacrosse Association. That and so much more, this is WLA Weekly. The Burnaby Lakers opened up the season at Bill Copeland Arena where the Nanaimo Timber were in town. It was a seesaw battle, however, one minute to go in the third period. Nanaimo's captain, Graham Palmer, scored to take the game 8-7. to seven. On that same night, the Shamrocks opened up their season on the island versus the Coquitlam Adonacs, where in the first period they had a 4-0 lead. However, the Adonacs would fire back, but it wasn't enough as the Shamrocks take the game 10-6. to six. Two of the newest members of the Shamrocks, Scott Ranger got a hat-trick, and also Corey Conway got 7 assists in the 10-6 win. On Sunday night at Planet Ice, the Maple Ridge Barrards were taking on the Langley Thunder, where it was also a seesaw battle, but the Thunder took the game away in the second period with five unanswered goals. The Thunder won the game 13-10. And lastly, the Salmon Bellies were at Frank Crane Arena in the nine would take on the Timmerman, and throughout the majority of the game, the Salmon Bellies had the lead, but the Timmerman always fought back, but it wasn't enough as the Bellies take the game 15-12. After the first week of the WLA, the standings followed. Victoria Shamrocks, Langley Thunder, New Westminster, Sandbellies, and Nanaimo Timmerman all tied first place with two points. While Burnaby, Maple Ridge, Coquitlam all tied with zero. The Timmerman are the only team with two games played. I'm joined with Casey Cook, the Commissioner of the Western Cross Association. Casey, these helmets have given quite the stir in the league. Give us your take on the league's take on it. Well, what seems, uh, Tally, to be actually uh, a fairly uh, simple situation is actually uh, quite complex in that the, uh, the masks uh, were changed this year and uh, there was about three, three or four masks that were CSA approved and uh, the CLA mandated that uh, all lacrosse players in Canada use one of those uh, masks that are CSA approved. We are experiencing uh, reports of uh, injuries uh, as a result of the use of these masks. The problem with just switching back is, is that the old ones no longer are CSA approved. With that goes uh, the insurance. Uh, that the provincial bodies carry, that uh, all the teams in British Columbia automatically are, are carried uh, along with that insurance and with that liability coverage, arena, in, uh, arena coverage, uh, uh, injury uh, insurance, th those kinds of things. So it's not just a simple case of switching back. Uh, I know that Ontario uh, has made uh, statements that uh, they're not going to be liable. I know that uh, Alberta has given options to their players. The Junior League in British Columbia has uh, made some statements. But for us, in the final analysis, we're actually holding off until we find out what happens at a meeting tomorrow night. The, uh, the CLA executive is meeting uh, with uh, the manufacturers and the distributors and we're, I hope we're going to get some decision making fairly quickly. Now we're, we're not saying that we're not aware that there are issues with the new masks but we just need to make sure that we proceed prudently and that we don't leave our athletes without insurance. That's the, you know, that's, that's the key to the whole thing. The Western Cross Association has seven teams across BC. What are your guys' goals for five years, ten years? Do you guys want to expand? Well, the in order to expand, you you have to have a base, and it it uh, for us to expand down the road, and and of course that's that's always one's wishes. But you need to have a supply of junior players, and and with eight teams, it's really difficult to stock seven WLA teams. So for the WLA to grow and, and to get into other areas, which we would love to do, but we need to have, we need to have a supply of players. Before the WLA expands, we're going to have to have the Junior League expand. So it, it goes in tandem. Would, be would we love to be in other parts of the province? Absolutely. 
However, we we need to be re, we need to remain competitive with the East. The Man Cup is held every two years uh, in in the West. It's it's held every year, but we need to make sure that we have our share of Man Cup wins. So you don't want to expand to the point where you're diluting your product and taking it away from the enjoyment of the fans. Because in lacrosse, the Man Cup is a huge, uh, you know, it's a huge goal. It's a goal for every team. And speaking of the Man Cup, we're hosting this year. Kind of give us a brief description of what is the Man Cup. Well, the Man Cup is uh, the, uh, the, one of the oldest trophies uh, in Canada. It certainly is the most valuable. It, it's got quite a history. Uh, it was given by Sir Man uh, for lacrosse premise, supremacy, which at the time, at the turn of the century, 19th century, uh, was for field lacrosse. Uh, since then, it has been applied to box lacrosse. It was uh, uh, with the, between the East and the West, uh, the old uh, Intercity Lacrosse League and now the Western Lacrosse Association. Very old trophy and it's very, very hard fought for. And uh, you ask any, any lacrosse player, summer league, and that's what lacrosse is all about. Great, thanks. You bet. Thank you for watching this edition of WLA Weekly here on VSBN.ca. Keep it locked right here to VSBN.ca for all your local sports.